West Ham take on Manchester City. I have a theory. I'm not going to go into it just yet. But people are saying Erden Haaland might score more goals than he did in his first season because he looks fitter, looks sharper, and he had the summer off. And Guardiola mm. spoke about that as well. Mm. What are we saying? Is this a new version of Erling Haaland? It's a player just coming into himself. And I remember like, it seems like a lifetime ago now when people were questioning whether he could do it in the Premier mm. League. I don't know why, because at Salzburg, his goal-scoring record is basically one in one. At Borussia Dortmund, his goal-scoring record is basically one in one. Um, and at Man City, it's not too far off of that. He scored four goals in his first two league games um, and he looks unstoppable. At Chelsea, he looked like he had a bit between his teeth, maybe because of the Cucurella song that involved his name and he absolutely bodied him, scored a goal against Chelsea. And against Ipswich, he did what you expected him to do. There's a reason why multiple people triple captained him on fantasy because you knew that he was going to score a lot mm. of goals. Um, and he scored five as well, to be fair. He's inevitable, man. He's... Um, I don't think he we can quite yet call him the greatest goal scorer in Premier League history because I think greatness comes with longevity as well. But he's the best. I think pound for pound he's the best. If you look at the minutes to goals ratio, just look at the sheer amount of goals he scores. And you look at last season, which was an off season for him. He scored 27 league goals. That's most people's career years. He's just unstoppable. And people create or well, people create a narrative about Haaland that it's because of the chance he created with the City players that he's got behind him. But he was doing this at other clubs. He does it international level. He does not in Champions League. I think that he could, if he stays fit, break that record of 36 league goals. It's just fitness as well, I think. Yeah, Pep's spoken a lot about how tired he was. I think even Haaland at the start of the season spoke about players playing too many games. And then also added to that, he's now got Savio and Doku, who are like almost service wingers rather than when you had even Mares and Sterling and Sane, these guys wanted to score goals. I think he's now got two wingers that go, we just want to put the ball in the box for you to score. And he's kind of like, man, it's amazing because now he's also got De Bruyne doing the same. And I think, and I tweeted this, if they can keep De Bruyne and Haaland fit for 30 plus games, they'll walk the league in my opinion. Yeah, if, if, if Haaland plays a whole season, he scores 40 plus. That's, yeah. just, that's just the way it is, isn't it? Mm. He, he in showed. the league, in the league. Probably. If, he play, if, right. if Haaland was to play 38 games in the league, He'd probably not. Far, he'd probably get around thirty-eight goals a goal a, yeah, goal a game, yeah, wouldn't he? Because yeah, yeah. he's going to have the games like he did against Ipswich, <laughs> where he scores three. He's going to have a game at some point where he scores more than three. Mm. Like, like Quaker says, it, it, it's just inevitable. I think. I thought Doku at times last season harmed him, but I feel like he's refined his game a little bit this this season. Doku in that it just takes too long to get the ball in the box, and Harland's someone who makes these these sharp movements. He'd make the move, and then Doku would check back. Whereas the season before, it, it was Grealish, and it felt like they were up, they were on the same wavelength in terms of in terms of service. So Harland, if he, if he was to stay at Man City for you know the most of his career, he will score the most goals that the Premier League has ever seen. Yeah. Where he'll break the record. Yeah. You, you would say that's inevitable. I think the stat the other week after the Ipswich game was he scores a hat trick once every ten games. He's got, yeah. Has he got ten already? He's yeah. got ten or seven. I think seven. I think seven. Yeah. And Someone I think... signed a board in there saying they're sick of signing those balls. Last yeah. Week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, Erling Haaland aside, City. A lot of people were saying at the start of the season, four in a row that they're they're not they're just not going to be at it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Um, it feels like they're actually even more in the zone than they were last year. Uh, I don't see any physical fatigue anywhere. Um, are, they, are they the favourites this year? Yeah, I, th I think they are. I think Gundogan has aided that. I think he just gives them another option there in, in the midfield. You know, where Manchester City changed their team and they haven't actually got the biggest squad. I think what they maybe lacked in midfield to go all the way in all the competitions last season was just that little bit more of variety, bringing in players and your your level doesn't drop. The fact that they've added Gundogan back into into that midfield now just gives them pure class mm. all, all round. So I think maybe even missing out last season on, on winning more than one trophy, I think that will hurt them and that will give them more of a, a steelier determination to go and do more this season. So I have actually tipped Arsenal to, to, to win the league just because I, I just think it's it, it's their time now. But Manchester City will go to the wire in, in multiple competitions this season. I, did, I said the same, but then, as you know, I love Ilkay Gundogan, but I do I do think he tips them to be the favourites, because yeah. I think... He probably does, yeah. Because when you look at like the match winners, and I look at this team and I go, Bernardo on his day can be a match winner, De Bruyne is a match winner, Haaland's a match winner, and then match winners in different ways, your defenders, Stone's a match winner, I think Edison's now a match winner, Gavardio last season was unbelievable, Rodri's a match winner, you throw Gundogan in there, and I go, I just don't think Arsenal have that many match winners. They've just got incredible, incredible... The players you named there, man, they're like Premier League Hall of Famers already. Um, and that's like six in one team. You could argue De Bruyne's the greatest Premier League centre midfielder of all time. People will argue with you, but you can have that discussion. I said that Haaland's the best goal scorer that we've ever seen in the Premier League. And then you mentioned the serviceable winner, wingers in terms of Doku and Savio. I think Doku gets a lot of 
unwarranted criticism. He's a throwback winner. He'll try things 10 times in the game. It'll work twice, but you'll get a goal out of it. Um, Savio's obviously a lot more refined. When you squint, you see Riyad Mahrez. And yeah. I think that he's going to set up a lot of goals for Haaland. But it's a team that just absolutely stacks. One position that I do think we need to just question is... I think Edison's on his way down and I think the decline's very, very steep. Um, the goal that Sammy Smodic scored, Edison That's saves that. He game. saved that two or three years ago and I feel like City were entertaining the idea of letting him go. I think Stefan Ortega's a great backup keeper. Obviously, Edison will keep his shirt for the rest of the season but I think you'll see some big games where Edison might be at fault for goals and that might be the games that cost City this season because five in the rows is so difficult to do. Everyone playing at that level. I think anybody in this team is going to drop his level. I think we've already seen it with Edison. Mm. Uh, then West Ham obviously we've got to talk about them um, you're not a, a massive fan of Lopetegui but they've spent a lot of money they've bought a lot of players in and when I look at that front four uh, Bowen Kudus Paqueta there is Antonio on the sheet in front of me but there is uh, Somerville Fulkrug it's like five or six attackers that I think most teams in the league would envy I mean if Lopetegui doesn't get backed He'd just walk. He'd probably, if he hadn't been back this summer, have walked yeah, already. That's true. just that's just who 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 Lopetegui You've got is. You got a problem with him, haven't you? Yeah. No, no, no. I just <laughs> I just think he's quite volatile, and if he doesn't get what he wants, yeah. Unlike some other managers, perhaps he he does walk away and maybe put it put himself first. But he will solid them up defensively because they were awful at the back last mm. season. Everyone talks about mm. David Moyes, his brand of football, but it was very unusual the amount of goals that they conceded under David Moyes last season. I think they've eliminated some of the reasons for conceding those goals. If you think. I thought Zuma was clunky at best yeah. last season. He's not going to be there anymore. Kilman is an upgrade uh, on him. You saw already the way he can break the lines mm. with the passing, the way he's comfortable enough to, to come forward and, and step into midfield. That, that will help them. I do think you know you've named their attacking players. You know, Kudus, Bowen, and Pakatar behind a striker is ridiculous. Outrageous. <laughs> it's behind that where I think is there that kind of ball playing number six in there that Edson can, Alvarez. He's injured he a little bit last player? year. Is he he's, not player, in, he's not enormously ball playing, but I really like him as a yeah, profile yeah. in midfield. Like it's it's weird. I think their team is it's a six and a four, and like normally teams like whether you attacking teams attacking different ways, but I think their team is actually like six defensive players, four attacking players. Their problem is just getting the ball into the attacking third, and I agree with you there that like maybe Edson Alvarez and Thomas Suchek. Maybe Ward Prowse, like none of these guys. Ward Prowse is going to go, I think. Yeah, so then none of these players make me go. They'll probably get the ball forward, but I think if you put put Paqueta a bit uh, deeper, mm. and then maybe play Bowen through the middle, Crescentia Somerville on the on the right hand side of the left, you've suddenly now got like a four prong attack with a player who can play between the lines. The trouble with Kudus and Bowen is, I think you know, Kudus is doing a magnificent job down the left, but I think probably both of them, their best position would be on the right. Yeah, yeah you would yeah. say, but you quite simply have to have both of them in the team and Pakatar's not going to get dropped back into a six mm. at the moment so he has, he has to play ten it's very difficult for anyone else to, to kind of get in that yeah. in but that what, what's really interesting for this game is City are susceptible on the counter attack we saw it against Ipswich yeah. to be yeah. fair Kudus is brilliant in possession mm -hmm. and, and basically driving 30 yards at the pitch Bowen is a forward that arrives into the box at exactly the right time knows how to finish and if they start with Fulcrug you've got someone up there who's going to trouble City uh, in aerial duels so I do wonder if in a weird way West Ham might go and this might be a nice game for us to actually like figure out how we actually want to play long term because I think they're stuck between a rock and a hard place are we David Moyes West Ham are we this new forward thinking side that's spent loads of money so um, I think it's interesting I, th I think they I think the battle in this game uh, for West Ham is keeping Erlen Haaland quiet because I think that they match up quite well with the City team oddly enough I feel I feel like they've got enough to, to trouble them like you said on the counter attack it's just whether Erlen Haaland bullies Mavropanos and bullies Max Kilman because he's got the ability to do that when he wants to. Um, and so, I I don't know. I think this one's going to be a tight one. Man. I think City are going to struggle a little bit. It's just whether Haaland turns up and does what Haaland's done at the beginning of the season already. And what are we saying predictions-wise? Comfortable 2-0 for Man City. I think Man City win 2-1, but it's it's not comfortable. I'm going to go 1-1. I've ah, got a feeling. I've got a feeling that West Ham are going to do something. And... Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think City have been clean, but not perfect yet.